What's up, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to my 2K16 Let's Play. My career, hair in my eye, uh, on the PS4. It is Thursday. I think it's Thursday. It's Thursday, and we're gonna fight uh, Goldust on SmackDown, supposedly, and uh, talk a little bit about a little bit about what is going on in the world of professional wrestling today. There's this card here. Uh, as we head toward the road to WrestleMania, while in the real world we are on the road to the Royal Rumble, which is next Sunday. So it's coming up pretty soon here, as they continue to stack the deck against Roman Reigns, who uh, I don't think will win the Rumble. Uh, I've heard, you know, that the supposed main event is going to be Triple H versus Reigns, so certainly, give Triple H the belt for two months. That seems like a logical thing to do. They don't have the Elimination Chamber anymore, therefore, he wouldn't have to defend it in the Chamber. He would only have to deal with it at Fastlane. And I'm sure he could get some excuse to not defend it at Fastlane. When you, when you consider that Brock Lesnar had that belt for how long and only defended it on some pay-per-views and not others, there is no longer a 30-day clause to defend your title, which is, you know, that used to be the, the, the thing. You used to have Jack Tunney saying, yeah, every 30 days, if you, if you don't d defend it, you lose it. Uh, but clearly, Brock has broken that spell. So, certainly you could have Triple H win the belt, and then be like, I'm not going to fight you at Fastlane, Roman. I'll fight you at, at, on the grandest stage of them all. Uh, so, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that stuff. If they have Triple H win the Rumble, if... They have some some other type of shenanigans happen. It could be abeyance again. It could be it could be some kind of a weird nobody wins vacated situation. I don't fucking know. It could be a, a lot of things between now and April. Uh, I think what is actually more important, perhaps not more important, but what is what is a bigger question mark is now that they have been planning for so long to have. John Cena fight The Undertaker, uh, Legend vs. Legend, or whatever, at Mania. Certainly, John Cena, who just had shoulder surgery, not going to be healthy enough when they're saying he's going to be out like six, six months. And, and granted, he's had his things where he came back way faster before. Uh, to, the, to the consternation of, you know, whoa, of everyone. You know, like, why is he already back? God damn it. Uh, but... This time, I don't see him making it back for WrestleMania to fight Taker, and certainly not making it back in time to build the match that you would need to do, you know, beforehand. Uh, so, that leaves us with the question in who in the hell do you have Taker fight at WrestleMania? If it's not going to be John Cena, who else, who else is in a position to be... A big enough guy. I mean, granted, they had him fight Bray Wyatt, so perhaps you know, not that not not, not that big of a deal. You could just get any mid card guy that you're trying to push, and then obviously you do the opposite of what you did with Bray Wyatt, and don't have him fucking lose at Mania to, to Taker uh, after he's been on a you know losing streak. But yeah, whatever. Um, Theoretically, you know, you can say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna bring up Finn Balor to, to to challenge Taker. That's you know, that's a road you could go down. Now, does that uh, impact your NXT ticket sales and ratings? Well, not ratings, they're they're on TV, but you know, does that impact NXT as a touring brand if you take Finn Balor and put him on the main roster now? I mean, you don't have to go full-time main roster because obviously uh, Kevin Owens was the NXT champ while he was still fighting John Cena in his, you know, main roster transition phase. Like, so that, that'd that be fine for, you know, a few months, but do you have anybody else who can take that spot on, on NXT? Now, obviously, going forward, you realize that, hey, we've got these... New Japan guys coming in, and if you're not going to immediately main roster those guys, then those could be the guys that you could have, you know, as your top NXT guys. 
Like, that is certainly an option, certainly a road to go down with that stuff. So, it's like, hey, guess what, AJ Styles, or Nakamura, or, you know, Luke Gallows, uh, that's fine. But, still, you're left with the question, who is fighting Taker, busted open, at WrestleMania? We don't know. We just don't know. Uh, now, Taker, uh, if the rumors or the, the, the thing saying, oh, major superstar returns at Fastlane, like, that's probably going to be Taker. Um, so, perhaps they'll, they'll establish who he's fighting uh, there. But hopefully it's not Bray Wyatt again, because that would be a fucking shame. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's, that's kind of the biggest question I have. Like, like... Wouldn't be surprised to, to, to see the main event uh, at Mania be tr Triple H and Reigns, and then Reigns to, you know, stand tall as they continue to push Reigns to the fucking moon, because that is what they want. They're trying to recreate Daniel Bryan very hard, and whether or not they can successfully recreate a Daniel Bryan situation I mean, kind of remains to be seen. Uh, but yes, that's kind of what's been going on. The other thing... As soon as I get in the next match here. Oh no, Adam Rose is not like us at all. Do we no do we do we no longer have a tag team partner? Is the party pooper leaving us? Has our party been pooped? My rank increased. I am now number two. I totally forgot that Goldust was that high up on that list. Uh we are now number two in the rankings, but we can't fight Barrett just yet because we're locked into this mystery feud that's probably staying. Uh but also, we didn't get a Renee Young interview there, so... Perhaps... Oh, hey, WrestleMania is gonna be, like, soon. And speaking of Bray Wyatt, there's Bray Wyatt. How about that? Win your match after... I'm not gonna let Bray Wyatt give me the Sister Abigail. No thank you. No thank you, Authority, and your bullshit. Hey, get up, beat up first, goals. That's not how I roll here. I am the Ebenezy. Uh, anyway. I guess we'll go fight Bray Wyatt, uh, as we, uh... Opening match? Come on, what kind of fucking... What kind of jobber do you think I am? Well, I guess The the Rock's fighting Taker. So yeah, The Rock's supposed to be a mania, but he's not going to wrestle. Uh, St Stone Cold's going to be a mania, but certainly he's not going to wrestle. Because, you know, that's just... It's, it's, it's been, what, like like 14 years now? It's just... He has no interest. Uh, but he has said he was on the Jim Ross uh, podcast and said he would be there at WrestleMania. So that's the thing. Looking forward to more shenanigans with those two at Mania, but no actual wrestling because the ins the insurance company won't cl clear Rock to wrestle because he's going to be in the middle of, uh, I guess, doing a movie or something. But, uh, follow the cheeseburgers. Uh, but the other, I guess, little bit of news that I forgot to talk about yesterday that was kind of had the internet buzzing just a little bit was that UFC is coming out, or UFC 2. Uh, it's coming out uh, in like two months. I think it's out March. I think it's out February. I think it's, I, I want to say it's March. I don't actually know, but it's out soon, right? So you know, there like here's some trailers, here's some here's some interviews, whatever, whatever, whatever else. And this game is significant because it is the quote unquote UFC debut of CM Punk, who has not had a match yet uh, in UFC. Cause he he was he had that like weird injury and got kind of a little bit sidetracked, so he hasn't had a match yet. So having him in the game uh, bef before he has a match is funny, you know. Like it's it's amusing, but uh, what got people all up in arms, all uh, super upset about shit, was that his rating is an 85 out of 100 for a guy who's never had a match. There are guys in that game who've had matches who are rated lower than CM Punk. And predictably, the internet, uh, the, the MMA internet was like, this is bullshit? And I can see how logistically you would think this is bullshit, and it kind of is. But at the same time, you gotta think, you know, it's a video game, and who cares? Like... You had to give him a rating. You couldn't give him a zero. Like, that'd be fucked up. You know? And... Personally, the way that I'll think about it is that, hey, that rating is 
his money making potential, not his UFC skills, not his fighting skills. That is his that that is his box office draw rating, in that he has an 85, and that he could draw some money. And that's the only reason that they ever signed him in the first place, because he was a big name and he could draw money. Uh, he might just get his ass whipped in that first match, because he has no uh, professional career yet. So yeah, people were pretty mad about it. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the internet. The internet gets mad at everything. So, like, you can't take... Like, that stuff, you know, grain of salt and all that. Because, uh, the, 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 the internet is, is known for being, uh, angry assholes. That's kind of just how it works. But, but yes, I, I do agree that having guys below him... Having guys under him on the rating system when uh, they've had matches and he hasn't is kind of bullshit. Now granted, you know, like, if you've had matches and lost a bunch, then I guess sure, fine, whatever. But it's just real funny, you know? Like, um, he hasn't had a match yet, so ha what are you basing this number on? Because clearly it's not his fighting skills, you know? Anyway, that's kind of more or less the news I had to discuss today. I think it's interesting that, that we're on Raw here, and this is Mania Week, right? And it still says Mystery Opponent. So, like, at this point, you would have known it was Sting. Like, they would have booked it at being Sting this close to Mania. Come on now. That's called having a proper build-up for your feud at the show, you know? Like, that makes sense. But never let it be said this game attempts to make sense, because a lot of times it just doesn't. It just does not make any good goddamn sense, uh, as we, whoa, as we, as we, as we, we've certainly seen here, um, Bray Wyatt getting a little upset, uh, upset that we are, um, running roughshod over his flock. I had seen a news story, they were actually going to attempt to bring, uh, someone in to play Sister Abigail. Uh, in the in the coming months or something like seated sent on uh, or running sent on uh, they were gonna bring somebody in to place the actually place this sister Abigail which uh, if you've done any bit of you know if you understand that character S sister Abigail is a concept not an actual person it was never intended to be an actual person but WWE uh, once again, decides to do everything completely literally, and goes, no, 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 that's an actual person, and we're gonna bring her in as part of, you know, his flock, uh, and whatever else. And so, certainly, like, I don't see how... Hold on here. Use his finisher. I don't see how that you do this thing. You go, okay, I'm gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in Sister Abigail as a person, as a, as a physical being, right? How do you not use uh, Bray Wyatt's actual sister? Like, you have to, right? You have to. You can't not do that. You can't bring in somebody else to be Sister Abigail. Like, he has an actual sister, and that'd be fucking perfect. Whether or not she wants to do it, eh. I mean, certainly she grew up with her dad being IRS. She grew up in the wrestling business, and both her two brothers, Bo and Bray, are, are in the business. So, that would make the most sense to bring her in. Oh, and here comes Stang. Stinger! I'm going to the White Castle of Fear. If you don't understand the White Castle of Fear reference, I'm going to have a card here. to so go watch Vader and Sting in peak era WCW with the White Castle of Fear. Uh, it is one of the greatest things that WCW ever did. And uh, I will never get tired of saying, Come through the White Castle of Fear, Stinger! Um, it's funny. Oh, hey, these guys had a match. That match was not very good. That match was not very good. At last year's WrestleMania, like in the daytime, WrestleMania. Anyway. Renee Young interview? Yep. Please welcome Call it. Guest tonight. Ebenezer. Let's talk about Triple H. Sure. What are your thoughts on Triple H? I mean, he can kind of do what he wants. He's the COO. He's the CEOO. 
This was the plan. Stings is a B plus player. I say the top stuff is face stuff, bottom stuff is heel stuff. So uh, I, this was the plan all along. This was the plan all along. I'm smarter than everyone else. Smarter than Sting. Smarter than the WWE universe. Smarter than all of them. Triple H and the Authority has this under control. No one can stop the Authority. Not even Sting. Not even old man Sting. Back to you, Kyle. Thanks for the time. Back to you. So after 50 plus episodes, we are finally just about at our very first WrestleMania. And that will be tomorrow. Uh, let me see who is I had this facing here on, on, on Smack. Like, no one cares. It's fucking SmackDown. Honestly, the SmackDown before Mania, usually, like, mostly a clip show. And not a whole lot of wrestling there. So, uh, we will have a quick match with Sheamus tomorrow on SmackDown. And we're not going to lose. You don't lose going into Mania. You don't, you, you, I'm on a fucking roll here. Like, why the hell would I lose to Sheamus? That's the dumbest order. The Authority is supposed to be helping me. They, uh, Triple H attacks Sting. They're helping me. Why would you tell me to lose to Sheamus after putting on a three-star? And second of all, second of all, third of all, fourth of all, why is this still a question mark? That shit makes no sense. Why is this still a question mark? Wouldn't you say, hey, guess what? You're fighting Sting. Like, look, two, two. Am I fighting Triple H? Am I, am I not going to know my opponent until the night of the show? Is that what's going to happen there? Uh, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Right here on this channel for more 2K16, my career mode, Ebenezer's Revenge. Thanks everybody for watching, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow for uh, the grandest stage of them all. The event that supersedes the Super Bowl, according to Vince. Uh, so tune in for that, and I'll see you then. I'm a tax slug, and I'm out.